Hi, my name is Randy Ray, and this is Cisco Umbrella. Cisco Umbrella is the first line of defense against threats for users on and off your network. Umbrella is DNS layer security. Anytime an Umbrella user attempts to access an internet domain, they are first directed to the Umbrella DNS server, where they will meet your policies and their activity can be logged. In this quick demo, I'll show you how easy it is to deploy Umbrella and create a policy, how to search for activity and schedule reports, and how to identify and control applications in your environment. Deploying Umbrella in your network is as simple as pointing your DNS servers at our DNS servers. Put in your network name, your IP address range, hit save, and you're good to go. The great thing about Umbrella is it does protect your users even when they're not on your network. And for that, we have a roaming client. So you come over to roaming computers, click the roaming client up here, and you'll have the client that can be installed on Windows or Mac. And if you're already an AnyConnect user, then you can use that to install Umbrella. You could also install Umbrella on mobile devices. So you have a config file here for Android devices. And for Apple devices, you can use your mobile device management solution of choice to push it out. And it could also be installed on Chromebooks as well. And here's your instructions right here for doing that. You can create users and groups, and you could also integrate fully with Active Directory, which makes it a lot easier to see who's doing what when you're uh, creating policies and then viewing activity afterwards. Once you have deployed Umbrella, the next thing is to create a policy. We're going to click on Policies and then go down to DNS Policies under Management. Click Add, and here we get started creating a policy. So we have two main categories for a policy. We have access control and block threats. You can imagine there's probably some people in your organization where you want to keep them secure by blocking threats, but you don't want to control what they're accessing online. We do have some advanced settings as well that are a little bit beyond the scope of this demo. Uh, but we have things like intelligent proxy and SSL decryption our, uh, capabilities here. And now you'll determine who you want to protect with this policy. So you could do all of your Active Directory users or all Active Directory groups, or you could select subgroups of people, uh, or you could select individuals within a group as well. Once you've decided who you want to protect, click Next. And then what categories do you want to block? So we have a few preset selections here. You can go in and edit these. Uh, some reasons you might not want to block something like newly seen domains is if you are developing uh, websites at your location, you might not want to be blocking those websites for particular users. We do have integrations with other security solutions as well. This takes us to the limit content access page. And so we have you know, high, moderate, and low preset categories. And then you could also click custom and then select specific categories over here that you want to block with this policy. Here you can control applications. So you can see uh, we have different categories of applications that you could block or you can go into a category and see particular applications that fall under that category. So you could block all games, or you could select this and block specific ones. Uh, social networking, you could block all social networking, or you can select particular ones, such as 4chan or 9gag, or uh, whatever makes the most sense for you. Once you've decided what you want to block, Click Next. And then here you can just create destination list. So this you can explicitly allow or deny access to particular sites or groups of sites. And then here you just select if you want to do file inspection. And here you can set up a block page. So this is where you'll determine what you want users to see when they try to access something that they don't have access to. Uh, you could put instructions in there about who to contact if they need to request access to a site for a particular reason.
Now we have our policy summary, so we can name our policy up here. And it gives us an overview of everything that we're doing. And you click save, and you're done. One great thing to do after you've created the policy is to test it. So we do have the policy tester here. And with the policy tester, you can test access to any URL from the perspective of any computer or device on your network or from any roaming client. So now we have Umbrella deployed in our environment and we have a policy created. The next thing to do is going to be to monitor our network and see how the daily use is of Umbrella. We have our overview page here, which gives us kind of a breakdown of generally what's going on in our network. We can see total requests. We can see total blocks and security blocks. We have a firewall breakdown. We have some different security categories that we're seeing in our network. We have an overview of the applications that are being flagged, the risky applications, discovered cloud apps. Uh, security requests, I find this page to be really helpful, this little widget here. Uh, you can see either by identity or destination where the most security blocks are coming from. So you can see which users are initiating the most block requests in your network, or you can see which destinations are receiving the most block requests in your network. So something like seeing you know, 230 requests for kind of a, a strange looking site here, that could be indicative of you know, some type of compromised device in your environment that's trying to, to call home or send information back. Um, and you can see particular users that have you know, 226 block requests, you know, that, that could be an issue. So that just warrants further investigation, but this gives you a really good overview of, of what you might want to start looking at. Under reporting, over here on the side, we have our core reports. So we have security overview, security activity, activity search, app discovery, and threats. The activity search is going to give you the ability to search for anything that's happening in your network. So you can search by the response that Umbrella takes. You can search by protocol, by event type, by identity type, or by security categories. And there's likely going to be a lot of different combinations of filters that make sense for you to look at in your network. For instance, if you wanted to see all block antivirus events, you can do that. And that might be an important one. And instead of having to come back here you know, every, every day or every week and, and fill out all of these filters for whatever makes the most sense for you, once you've determined a set of filters that you find to be important. You can come up here to click schedule and this will show you all the filters that are applied. Click continue and then you could schedule a report either daily or weekly or monthly, whatever makes the most sense. And then you could have this report emailed to you or to whoever in your organization you want to see this report. And you could do that with multiple different combinations. So that's the activity search. The next thing I want to show you is app discovery. So with app discovery, we're going to have some flagged categories here. So you can see we have 21 unreviewed apps in the anonymizer category. Anonymizers are used often to try to circumvent some of your security policies. If you click on details, that'll take us to the app discovery page where we could search for different applications by category, by risk, uh, whether or not we've reviewed them or not, if they're approved or not approved. And so we could see uh, right now we're looking at all unreviewed. And so these are all anonymizer applications that are being accessed in our network that we haven't taken a policy stance on yet. So when we see something like IP vanish, and you know, maybe Hydester or something like that where it has a higher uh, risk assessment. Maybe we don't want this to be used in our environment or for particular users. And so right from here, we can control this application. And you can see we have different uh, policies here that we've created in the past, and we could determine which policies we want to use to block this application. If you want to block this application specifically for branch users or 
or students or whatever app, whatever group of uh, whatever policy that we've created that applies to specific groups. So once you've selected that, you just click save and then you're now controlling that application. So that's a quick overview of Cisco Umbrella. There's a lot more that this tool could do. It's a very powerful tool, um, but this just gives you an, an idea of some of the kind of fundamentals of it, how easy it is to use and how easy it is to quickly start getting uh, useful and actionable information from it. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.